The USA Department of Defense has recently removed quite a lot of drones from its Blue US cleared list of drones. This includes drones made by Inspired Flight, Freefly, Parrot, and some others. And now, this has obviously left a lot of drone pilots questioning. So, why have these platforms been removed and what drone should they get? And which list should you follow when getting a drone in 2025? Firstly, full disclaimer, we are not lawyers and all the information we'll present in this video is from what we have found ourselves. And in case uh, we are wrong on any of the points, please make sure to correct us, leave a comment down in the description below. But now, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Firstly, there is the blue UAS list. Now, this is the list maintained by the USA Department of Defense. Out of all the lists, this seems to be the one with the most strict requirements for a drone manufacturer or payload manufacturer to get their system on that platform. And now, first thing to keep in mind is that just because a drone is on the list, it does not mean that they get to stay there forever. Now, these lists are being constantly updated. And that's why also with now the latest update, you saw some of the drones that have been removed. There are certain criteria for removing drones from this blue UAS list, such as, for example, how many purchases are made by the Department of Defense for this platform, and also, of course, related to the constant changing of needs by that department. And also, of course, if a manufacturer fails to address certain cybersecurity concerns in a given time frame, this might also cause the drone to be removed from that list. And now second, after the blue list, there is the green UAS list. Now, this is maintained not by a government entity, but by a VSI organization. And so this list is essentially intended that for drones, which might later be also included in the blue UAS list, for them to kind of be a bit of a stepping platform, so to say, at least that's from our own uh, understanding of this. Even though this list is maintained by a private organization, all the platforms on this list, they are still vetted. And so this means that they are vetted for frameworks based on, firstly, corporate cyber hygiene, second, product and device security, then remote operations and connectivity, as well as supply chain risk management. We'll leave the link down in the description below so you can check out how these platforms specifically are vetted through these frameworks. And thirdly, after the blue list and the green list, there are what's called the NDAA compliant drones. But what, what does this mean exactly, NDAA? So the NDAA is the National Defense Authorization Act. Essentially, this is a law which simply states uh, things such as what components can be used in a given drone or payload system. What's interesting from our own research is that NDAA simply means that uh, the drone or payload manufacturer, they themselves state that this system is NDAA compliant. And for you as the drone pilots, what this means is that you can take that system and you can use it for governmental or governmental backed drone projects. NDAA compliance simply means that the drone, drone's controller, or the payload does not contain any prohibited components, which are typically ones made in China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. These components are prohibited from being used in USA government or federally backed projects. So in other words, if you want to check that a drone is NDAA compliant, then firstly, you can simply ask the manufacturer for the certificate. And second, if you want to just take it a step further, you can also check the green or the blue UAS list. Typically, if that device is going to be on one of these lists, this means that some additional vetting has uh, been done to it, and it is indeed NDA compliant. And now, this brings us to the question, so as a drone pilot, if you're considering getting a new drone in 2025, so what system should you go for? Firstly, of course, there are DJI drones. These are technically still the most advanced drones, at least in our own opinion. However, of course, uh, you know that these drones cannot be used on USA government or federally backed projects. So if you want to do those projects, this leaves them out. And next, there is the potential DJI ban looming. However, DJI are also actually already addressing these concerns. So I guess we'll see. But in case you are primarily doing private projects, then you should still be okay with going with DJI drones. And so from DJI, the drones we can recommend the most, firstly, if you need to lift some heavier payloads, you can go for DJI M350 or M300 drones. Next, if you want to do more surveying that's related to doing photogrammetry or 3D modeling, then you can opt for the DJI Matrice 4, for which we also, by the way, recently reviewed, or the DJI uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise drone series. Or if you want to use a drone more for, uh, for instance, doing thermal surveys, uh, or if you want to do search and rescue operations, then you can also opt for the DJI M 
or the M30 thermal version. And next we have the gray area of drones. So these are drones that are not made in the USA. They are made outside. Some of them are also made in China, but these you can still uh, consider in case you are fearing the DJI ban. So firstly, we have Autel drones. Autel, they are Chinese drones, but still made quite uh, well and with decent sensors. Then next up, we have the Anzu Robotics. Now Anzu, uh, you might see the similarity between the Anzu and the Mavic 3 Enterprise, and that's because they're essentially more or less the same drone, but it's kind of intended to, you know, as a bit of a loophole around the regulations. I know it does run slightly different software, so there is a risk that if some DJI ban comes, then Anzu drones will not really be underneath. And thirdly, there are the NDAA compliant drones, and so these are the drones that you can use for USA governmental or federally uh, funded projects. And this includes drones such as the Inspired Flight 1200A, uh, the uh, Inspired Flight uh, 800, which by the way, we also recently reviewed. Also, this contains drones made by FreeFly, so the Astro, the Alta-X, the Wingtra, as well as other manufacturers. But as you know, hardware is just one part of the equation and software is just as, if not more important. And if you want the best drone flight planning software on the market, then make sure to head out to our website, egcs.com, and check out our professional drone flight planning software, egcs. And if you want to stay up to date with more drone-related content, make sure to subscribe to our channel, leave a like for this video, and see you in the next one. Thank you, and bye.